dear God, we just want to come here right now and uh, pray for the prayer request that was mentioned, God, for all, for the people of this church that have experienced loss recently, for for the people that we have mentioned with sicknesses, God, for uh, for all of these people, God, that we have mentioned, all the prayer requests that were mentioned, even the ones that weren't mentioned that uh, somebody just didn't want to talk about, God. We just want to pray for the prayer requests, God. We want to pray that you have your hand on them, God, and comfort people during this time. We just want to pray and, uh, and praise you for everything that you do, God. All the prayer, all the praise requests, the good news about the, the man who recovered from the coronavirus, God. Uh, and all the praises that we have experienced, all your goodness that we've experienced in our, our lives. I just want to thank you for it, God. We just want to pray that you use your word and and use it to show us what our mission is in life and just to lay a simple foundation for us, God, because sometimes we need simplicity. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. amen. So tonight we're going to be in the book of Ecclesiastes, and we're going to start, start out in chapter number two, in verse number four. We're going to go down to verse number 11, and that's just our introduction. And uh, it's just to give you an introduction of what Ecclesiastes uh, is about. I've taught a lot on Ecclesiastes because I really like the really like the book. But uh, so we'll start out in verse number four. It says, "I made me great houses. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. Vineyards. Planted me. That's what it's out. And verse number five. It says, "I made me gardens and orchards." And I plant trees in them of all kinds of fruits. Verse number six. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bring forth the tree. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the lights of the, soul, uh, the sons of men as musical instruments and that all of sorts. Verse number nine. So I was great and increased more than all they that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Verse number ten. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Verse number 11. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. Behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. And so Solomon is the writer of the Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes. And he was the wisest man at this time, and also the richest man at this time. And he wanted to set out, he wanted to see what was profitable. What could he do during his time on earth? What was meaningful? Have you ever asked yourself, what is meaningful? What, like, I only have a certain amount of days here on this earth. What is meaningful for me to do? What is it that God has purposed in my life? And so Solomon went through all these things. He, he did everything that everybody wanted to do. He had a lot of money, a lot of women, a lot of houses. A lot of horses, which would translate in our days, a lot of cars, he had pools, he had he had just these mansions, he was he was a rich man, he had everything they wanted. And then at the end, he looked on him, he looked at what he had and he said, Really none of, none of this is meaningful. He said, None of this has any lasting meaning or profit in my life. Maybe he was thinking, you know, have you ever heard when when you die you're not able to take your possessions with you? And that's the truth. I seen this uh, this picture on Facebook and or on Instagram, and it said, "When I die, bury me in my truck, because I never met a hole that my truck couldn't get out of." <laughs> and reading that just lied me up, <laughs> but I thought that was pretty funny. And uh, but but it's the truth that in our lives, whatever we accumulate in our lives, our wealth, our possessions, our trucks, our cars our rings, our jewelry, in the end it's not going to be able to go with us to the other side. It's not going to go able to go to heaven, hey God, can I bring this with me? You're not going to have a suitcase packed up uh, when, when the Grim Reaper comes to get you. You're not going to have all that. And you're not going to have the opportunity and say, God, I want to take this, what about this, what about this? And Solomon realized that all of this stuff was really worthless. All these things that he was worried about and he was doing was really worthless. So then he asked the question, what really 
is worth my time. And he goes throughout all of Ecclesiastes and talks about this. But look at verse number, uh, look at chapter number 12, that other verse that I have on the page. On the schedule. 14? Yeah. yeah. So he, he ends the book with this. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I just think that sounds pretty cool. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Have you ever met somebody that talks a lot and then you're just like, let me hear the conclusion of what you're talking about. <laughs> let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Of man. So on your life, in your life here, the simple thing is fear God and keep his commandments. You notice that people like to make stuff complex that's really not supposed to be complex. <laughs> you notice, you know, you have religion and all of these churchy things that tell you you have to do all of this stuff. But the Bible just simply says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. But that that's just that's a simple, that's a simple way to state it, but it can be complex. You know, God has a lot of commandments. God has a lot of commandments. He has a lot of things that he wants us to do. I can think of the, the Ten Commandments. And then I can think of uh, telling people about Jesus, the Great Commission. Then I can think of loving your wife and loving your husband and, and loving the church. And so Solomon at the end said, let's just keep it simple. Fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. I was talking to this girl about what was her goals in life. And I said, you know, what, what are your goals in life? What do you want to do after high school? And she said, I really don't know now. You know, coronavirus messed everything up. And I said, that coronavirus is going to be gone in a couple of years. You know what I said, right? You know, this, this coronavirus, you know, a lot of people overreact. If you look at history, there have been other pandemics. And there's been other, there's been the Spanish flu. There's been the swine flu. There's been uh, the bubonic plague, and guess what? Hundreds of years later, stuff is still going on. And that's not to say a hundred years later down the road, stuff's still going to be going on because we don't know because Jesus might come back before then. But the fact is that we, we need not to live in fear of this virus messing things up. And so... And so I was like, you know, you know this virus ain't gonna last forever. So what is your goal? And so she really couldn't tell me what her what she wanted to do after high school. And I was listening to this podcast. I get up in the morning, I go to the gym, and I, I listen to this podcast, and it was it was like a motivation type uh, video, and it was talking about how through he, he's a very structured man. He has a schedule for every day of his life. And he has things that he wants to accomplish. And throughout the quarantine, he's met days that during this whole pandemic, he's had days where he hadn't put together schedules. And he's been, got, been getting kind of sloppy. His focus has been kind of delays. And I think we can, we as a church and we as Christians can get that way. During this virus, maybe, maybe beforehand, you like to go to the nursing home and, and help with the nursing home. Maybe beforehand you like to go to certain places and do certain things. You like to go to these big churches and listen to these services or go to minister to people. And, and now you can't really do that. So now your vision is kind of blurred during this whole situation. You're like, what am I supposed to do now that we're in the middle of a national or a, or a worldwide pandemic? You know, and simply all you have to do is fear God and keep his commandments. We, we, Try to over, uh, we try to overly complicate things in our life when sometimes we don't need complexity. Sometimes we need simplicity. And sometimes we need to realize just how simple our our life is supposed to, it is. Keep His commandments and fear God. And I've been thinking a lot about recently my purpose in life. Because you know, once high school is over, you know, here comes the real world. This is my senior year. This is. This is the last year I have in school, and, and then what am I going to do for the rest of my life? What, what am I going to do to make my life count? And I think that I've over, made, made something overly complicated that wasn't supposed to be complicated in the first place. Whatever I do, fear God and 
keep his commandments. And this is the whole duty of man. It doesn't say this is part of his duty, and then you can add on all this other stuff. It says the whole duty of man. The whole job of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. You know, and I look at my own life, and I think, man, you know, during this quarantine, sometimes I forget, you know, I haven't feared God how I'm supposed to. Sometimes I haven't kept his commandments. Again, your vision gets kind of blurred during this whole quarantine, you know, especially when we couldn't have church. You know, I got to a point where if I wasn't at church, then I probably wouldn't be studying the Bible. You know, a lot of people are like that. Yeah. If you're not at church, then you probably won't be thinking about Jesus. You'll probably be watching TV. You'll probably be doing something else. You'll probably be looking at the news. You know? you better, you better now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably be meddling, reading books, you know, sitting in the recliner. If we didn't have church, you know, during that church uh, time, you know, some people slack off. And I'm not just saying I slack off. And so during this whole thing, sometimes I didn't keep God's commandments. But simply, you know, that's just something we have to do as Christians. As, as Christians and as as God's children, we have to fear him and keep his commandments. For this is our whole duty. I want you to think about it. Have you, uh, over, have you overly uh, made something difficult that wasn't supposed to be so difficult? Have you, uh, are, are you living the simple life of fearing God and keeping his commandments? You know, I like hanging around people older than me because they have a they have a different point of view. They have a very wise point of view. I feel like they live a much simpler life. And because in our age, you have phones and technology and, and you have all these things and you have deadlines that you have to make. But back in the day, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't live that long ago. <laughs> but back in the day, things were a whole lot slower. And you had a lot more simplicity. And I just think life was better back then. I think it's a huge blessing to be able to be born back in that time when you didn't have all these technology and phones and stuff. You, you lived a simple life. Uh, I hear country songs and, you know, kids going out and playing all during the day, going out in the field, and then all of a sudden they hear mama's voice and saying supper's ready and they're running barefooted, riding bikes. And you have to be home at a certain time, you know, mama's cooking supper and, and all these things. And it was just simple. You know, simple life, I feel like, is a good life sometimes. So as Christians, we need to get back to the simple life of fearing God and keeping His commandments. And this is our whole duty. Uh, I talked, like, last year, I got really deep into the study of, like, salvation and how things work and, and predestination and, and all of that and stuff like that. And I, I learned all kinds of stuff. But I've also came across a lot of deep thinkers. And then I listened to a song, and it was called Simple Gospel. And I, it, on the theme of simplicity, I was like, man, the gospel is just simple. You know, it, it's good to know God's word, but sometimes just people overcomplicate things. Jesus loved you enough to die for you. And if he didn't die for you, you would have went to hell. <laughs> I mean, it's just simple as that, you know. And our sin separates us from our holy God. Without Jesus dying and making that sacrifice, we couldn't be saved. Not, and, and it's an amazing gospel. It's an amazing fact. But it's also a simple gospel. God didn't make everything complex where you have to just do so many things. He just simply said, believe in me, and you shall not perish. And so uh, the whole goal of this message basically would be not to overcomplicate your Christian life, not to worry about all these extra rules. You know, back in the day, I think Baptists used to put a rule on such that you couldn't dance. Did I hear that right? <clears throat> and, you know, I think they overcomplicated a couple things. You know, it's not it's not wrong to have fun. God made fun. <laughs> now, some things uh, can get sinful and fun, but don't overcomplicate things. Live a simple life and fear God and keep His commandments. That's all we're commanded to do. I'll pray us out. Uh, dear God, I just want to come to you right now. Thank you for another day on this earth. Thank you for all the many blessings you give us. Thank you for the simple gospel.
that you have passed down throughout the ages, God. I just want to pray that you would help us to live a life where we fear you and keep our commandments. That if somebody from the outside was to look out on us, they would say, that person feared God. Because that is our whole duty in life, God. The Bible says that is our whole job in life, is to fear you and keep your commandments. I just want to pray that you would make that even so simpler and even so easy for us to do, Lord. Help us to go uh, and preach your word and be a shining light to the community, God. Keep us safe as we go home to return to Sunday, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Holy name. Amen. Amen.